What's up everybody, it's Zell here, and oh my god, let's talk about the newest episode of Dragon Ball Super. They dropped a lot of bombshells on us this episode, one big one, and um, we need to talk about that right now. So this was the episode uh, that was the fight between Goku and Bergamo, the crusher of Universe 9. The universe with the lowest mortal level, so let me correct myself first from last week's episode that I did for episode 80 where they revealed the whole thing about the mortal level where I kind of alluded to it or even said it would be about power levels it's not about power levels whatsoever it's not about who's strongest or who's the weakest what mortal level means and how they rank them is based on how how good of a universe it is like how good their gods are like their gods of destruction and you know their their various kais how 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 good they're doing their job how good you know the people of that universe are like we have in our universe people who have destroyed planets for a living like Frieza and the Saiyans we've had you know the craziest villains in our universe we've had crazy things happening universe 9 who is the lowest obviously has an arrogant god of destruction or not god of destruction sorry he ha they have an arrogant Kai and an indecisive kind of like Meh, whatever, God of Destruction. That that um, dwarf Muradin looking guy <laughs> looks like he's from World of Warcraft. So that's that was the whole thing about mortal levels. So apologies for messing that up last week. This is what it actually is. And they do actually explain it in this episode too, for clarity. So uh, Bergamo and Goku go at it. Bergamo the Crusher is a unique fighter in, um, in the sense that he uses his opponent's blasts and their attacks as energy for himself to grow and to grow in power like physically grow in size and also grow in power which when I said unique I meant unique so far in this arc it's not unique at all even Goku calls him unoriginal because you know we've seen people who use your powers against you like that's how that's that's that was the whole thing about the android and cell saga even Boo Boo was using like when he became Super Boo, like when Super Boo came out, you know, like he, he was absorbing people and using their power. And Majin Boo was eating people like candy and using obviously using their power, so um so he called them unoriginal, which was which was pretty funny in the episode. Uh kinda giving a nod at Dragon Ball Z and those sagas. Um Yeah, hopefully we get more original fighters in in the future of this arc, which I'm sure we will, because you know, Basil and Lavender were pretty interesting. Lavender especially was really unique. Like nobody so far has had his power, but enough about that. Um, so they go at it. Bergamo in the beginning of the fight though, before the fight begins, this is uh, really interesting. He, um, he tells Zemo, he proposes to him like, hey, if I beat Goku right now, will you please resend the rule about destroying the universes who lose? And everyone's like, what? That's, that's, that's really brave. Like, yeah, good shit. And, you know, I'm sitting here thinking no way Zemo's going to agree to that because they can't just take back that rule. You know, that's the most interesting thing about this arc. Without it, there'd be no tension in this. It would be just another tournament. It'd just be another tournament arc. And Zemo actually agrees. He's like, okay, if you can beat Goku, we'll allow that. We'll take away the rule. No universes are going to be destroyed. You know, it'll be just a regular as tournament. And... You know, Goku doesn't seem to be affected by this decision whatsoever. He says, I'm still going to beat you, and I'm not going to lose. Because I'm Goku, and I got to win. Um, <laughs> so they fight. Goku busts out Super Saiyan Blue. All the gods shit themselves, because they've never seen it. And they've obviously probably never seen a mortal with the god with the god key. With the blue key of a god. And... He beats him with a super Kamehameha wave, but then Bergamo is dragged out by the other two wolves from the dangerous trio, Basil and Lavender, while he's basically giving it to Goku about him being a villain, like telling him, like, would you really want to see all the universes destroyed just so you can fight? Like, is that all you care about? Is just fighting, and you know, you're gonna, you're gonna cause the deaths of entire universes. Like, he's, I mean, he is. He's not wrong. He's basically gonna be responsible for entire universes being erased. And Goku's like, nah, I'm cool, I don't give a shit, I get to fight strong warriors. And Bergamo tells him, now you've got everyone against you. And Goku turns to the other gods and he basically issues an open challenge. He's like, bring your strongest fighters to me and I will destroy them. I will defeat them, I'm gonna defeat any fighter you bring at me. And then right after that, they drop the bombshell. They tell us 
the actual rules of the universe. So, like I said last week, this so far they kind of setting up the universe uh, tournament arc. There's you know they're setting up the dynamics between the gods. They're introducing the gods, and this week they finally introduced the actual rules for the real tournament that's going to happen between um, eight universes now instead of twelve. That's another thing we learned during the setup episode. Universes one and twelve and five and eight will not be participating because their mortal level is too high. So besides those universes, the remaining eight will fight in a tournament that will determine which one of those universes survives. The rest of the seven will get destroyed. And uh, that's basically on Goku's shoulders, which uh, you know all the gods know right now and they all hate him for it and all the fighters hate him for it. So which is um, what makes these rules pretty interesting because so they first start out saying, okay, this is the stage that we're going to use. It's going to be a pretty big stage. And it's actually the stage, they've been showing this in the opening sequence, the new opening sequence that they've had for this arc for a few episodes now. So we have seen this stage before. If you pay attention during the part where it stops at the Dragon Ball Super logo, it's in the background. It's that spinning top looking thing. That's actually the stage. And they say, you know, to win, you have to knock your opponent off the side. Okay, cool. What if they're knocked out? Goku asks. You just drag him to the side. That's probably going to be funny. Um, and then, obviously, the tournament rules. No weapons, no killing. Well, this is the Grand Priest talking. So he said that the time limit will be 48 minutes. And Whis comments. He's like, well, isn't that kind of long for a, for a fight between two people? Like, we're going to have, like, 80, you know, 80, f 80 warriors. You know, there's going to be a lot of warriors fighting. And he said, well, actually... No, we're going to have one match with 80 warriors in one ring in a battle royale style match. It's basically going to be a royal rumble between these eight universes. 80 warriors are going to be in one battle arena at the same time, each trying to knock each other off the side. And they said the team with the highest amount of people surviving wins. So if there's a couple of teams, one has three, one has two. The one with the three people wins the tournament, and the one with the two people remaining at the end of the 48 minutes would still be destroyed, along with the other universes who would be destroyed because of them losing. So it's going to be one match, 48 minutes, no killing, no weapons. And the other crazy thing is there's no flying allowed. It's not even that it's not allowed, it's completely nullified because this fight's going to take place in the world of Void where apparently they're going to nullify people's ability to fly because that's, that's an easy way to get out of a ring out rule, it's just fly but they can't, so that's going to be interesting, there'll be some hardcore teamwork that's going to have to go into this and everyone knows Goku is shitty at teamwork and even when they tell him that he's like, well we got Gohan and so basically now we are in this situation where we have 80 warriors in the same ring 8 universes and 7 of those universes really fucking hate Goku because they could be destroyed and he would be the only reason for it like he th without him you know going to Zemo and asking for this tournament this tournament wouldn't even exist and I mean like I said when I talked about the last episode uh, that Zemo was initially going to destroy the weaker universes regardless so this is a way for only one of them to survive but still people see it as well this is Goku's fault because he's the one that went and talked to him and that's how Bergamo made it sound too by turning all the gods against him at the beginning of the episode so Goku's in a bad spot now where he's basically probably gonna get ganged up on because A he caused this to in, in, in their eyes he caused this and B they've all seen his power now so they know he's gonna be the most valuable fighter of Universe 7 because they've seen Gohan and Majin Buu too and you know they both fought really well and they were both incredibly strong but Goku is by far obviously the strongest they haven't seen Vegeta yet, so they can't say anything about him, and, you know, I think Vegeta's the strongest Saiyan. <laughs> but that's that's probably going to be another video if I decide to do that. Um, but to them, now, Goku is the strongest Universe 7 fighter. And at this point in the episode, because everyone has seen what Goku can do, and because now everybody knows what's going to happen because of Goku, which, you know, they, they, uh, they see it as it's Goku's fault, this mysterious hooded figure from Universe 11 who has been standing with them this whole time, you know, you've seen the Universe 11 gods when they showed all the gods, it was the one that looked like a clown with, he kind of, I think they're kind of doing like a Joker Harley Quinn type thing with them because he looks like a clown and then the Kaiosha next to him has like two pigtails on the side of her head, kind of like Harley Quinn, which is yeah, pretty interesting. I like it, it's pretty cool. 
So this hooded figure that was standing next to him this whole time that, you know, I called before like a Grim Reaper looking guy, he takes off the hood, you know, he like jumps in the ring and <laughs> he kind of looks like Eggman <laughs> from uh, Sonic. But so Eggman, Tapo, jumps into the ring and challenges Goku. He says, sorry, it was disrespectful to Zemo and the gods, but I need to fight Goku right now because he has taken this too far. He is he's a goddamn villain. And I am Justice, and I will bring you down. And that's basically how they set up the next episode. Uh, Topo is a warrior from Universe 11, and he is the leader of the Pride Troopers. And he's also wearing a uniform similar to the one that we see on the bug-eyed creature character that Goku fights in the beginning of the opening sequence. So I think he's also a Pride Trooper from Universe 11. Uh, I, I think that's also like kind of public knowledge by now, kind of bit confirmed type thing. But so that's going to be a really interesting next episode because now this is no longer a preliminary fight to the tournament. This is no longer something for Zemo's entertainment. This is someone stepping in saying, hey, Goku, you've gone far enough and I'm going to destroy you before you even get into this tournament. Like you're not even going to see this tournament. I'm going to make sure that you suffer the consequence of what you have done. Like you're not going to just come into this tournament, get to fight all the strongest people, get whatever you want and then just win and leave because they all saw him go blue and Kaioken on top of that so they just saw like probably the strongest fighter that they've ever seen and even in the preview for next episode Goku goes blue and you see the top of his face when it happens and there's just like this blue light shining on him and he's just terrified and I don't blame them that, like they explain the blue aura to be that of a god like that's god key so Goku is virtually on the level of a god when he goes blue almost because we still know he can't beat Beerus when he goes blue but this was pretty interesting let me know in the comments below what you guys thought about this episode let me know what you guys think will happen in the rest of this arc like what do you think uh, do you think that they're actually going to go ahead and destroy seven entire universes at the end of this do you think maybe the tournament will end in a tie that kind of be like a cop out with the tournament ended in a tie but then it could be interesting that you know, like for example, one universe or like one warrior is left from each universe and it's a tie. It'd be interesting to see what happens with that afterwards if they're gonna have some kind of a tiebreaker, maybe rethink the rules, maybe at that point in the arc some more story development has happened, maybe some hidden character development happens, something that we haven't even uh, seen yet right now. There has been hints that Goku gets a new form in the opening sequence and I think it's interesting in the opening sequence that the two Zemos have these blue and red highlights in their color, like they kind of leave a blue and red silhouette and they ha and they, they kind of color them as blue and red, and I think they did that on purpose. I think because color associativity, we know that blue is usually associated with things that are calm, things that are good, things that are, you know, that that make you feel relaxed. Like blue is a positive color, like that's that's something our mind associates with blue, and then red, on the other hand, is a negative color it usually represents um, something that is unpleasant or, or something that's not comfortable you know so so I think they're using that that colorization on purpose and I think we might see something develop out of that and uh, if you guys think I'm right if you think if you think I'm talking out of my ass you know again comments below let me know what you guys think let me know what you guys think of these weekly reviews too. It's kind of something new that I'm trying to do on the channel. And I know this one was a little bit late for this episode. And, you know, real life happens. I'm sorry. I'm going to release the next one on Saturday, hopefully on time after the episode. So wait for these videos every week to talk about every new episode from the universe survival arc for Dragon Ball Super. Thank you all for watching this. I hope you all enjoyed it. If you do, give it a like. Don't forget to leave those comments we talked about. And subscribe if you haven't already to never miss a video from us. My name is Zal. Thank you for watching. Everybody, peace out.